Hey everybody, Camden. It is August 2nd, 2021. I do have a public episode, you know, one topic kind of thing uploading. It'll probably go live after this is out. They take, so, they take more time than you realize to formalize, you know, all that evidence and connections. So, but I am proud of it and I think you guys will be too. Today is kind of a big U.S. news incorporating, you know, countries around the world, but it's a really big what the fuck day for the U.S. And so I'm going to say what the fuck some. First thing we have right into it, this really weird video of Joe Biden. He, see right here, he's got his hand on the shoulder of a young man. The video does say his name. He, he's, he's talking to him, you know, then he, then he takes his hand down right here and he begins to grab the child's hand. Looks like he's trying to hold it. And then you'll see him take his hand away, right? After just a second, you know, that point blank enough is creepy. Then the kid looks down, sees something in his hand, and then he's like, I don't know what the fuck, and then puts it in his pocket. I, I mean, I have no idea. If it's not obvious to, like, everyone, this man is... I, mean, I would say all presidents are puppets for the last, oh, good, almost... 50 years, right? Maybe only 40, you know, wherever you want to debate is fine, but presidents typically of recent memory are puppets, right? This man acts like a puppet outwardly. This is crazy to me. For the first time in his entire presidency, you know, impeach Biden is was trending briefly on Twitter today. I think it's not anymore, probably by the time this is out, but some people are starting to realize it. I mean, of his own presidency, you've got this massive border crisis right now. I mean, I don't know if anyone's seen these videos. I'm about to show some right here. You've got right here, you know, buses arriving every 30 minutes of at least, you know, 40, 50 people per bus. All the way on the other side of the border, you have a video right here of at least a thousand some odd looking people in Mission, Texas, uh, going across the Rio Grande spot. You've got 200 something people at La Jolla, Texas, you can't stop finding videos of this. You literally, it it's every hour, the thousands, hundreds, whether we like it or not, we know nothing, nothing about any of these people. It, vaccinated, unvaccinated, wherever you stand on it, coronavirus, fake, real. It, it's a medical problem, a jobs problem, a societal narrative problem that really feels like it's being ignored instead we're talking about no 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 it's okay for obama to have his birthday party because everyone is vaccinated no 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 the dc mayor didn't really break covid protocols are these not some covid protocols being broken i i'm just saying you know th these are shocking videos uh, and they don't stop congress recently point blank didn't finish its session by extending the eviction moratorium. I don't know if everyone knows the implications of that, but basically it could mean, you know, for the last year or so, anyone that hasn't paid mortgages hasn't been forced out of their homes. So no one's really felt that impact yet, even if they weren't paying. We already, before this expires, we have a massive talk about a homeless issue in the United States. Imagine if 125 more millions of people suddenly didn't have houses. I talk about a homeless issue then. It seems massively, Nancy Pelosi at one point this weekend tweeted that the CDC should extend it. Well, you guys didn't. You were in session. It's not like you didn't know about it. Uh, AOC, Corey Bates, whatever her name is. I mean, they held a Occupy Congress Saturday night, Friday night. I'm occupy congress the right got massively in trouble for actually occupying congress i don't know the, the, this this party lines disconnect is insane to me the cdc's right wasn't to extend the moratorium the supreme court specifically stipulated that the cdc had the right to do it the house would have to extend it to where they felt it's pretty clear it's pretty cut and dry We'll see what pans of this, but it honestly could be disastrous. The White House here is calling on state and local governments to extend eviction moratoriums. Well, 
I think they've been calling on them to, you know, do mandates of other things. They haven't yet. I don't know that local and state governments are going to listen to the White House. Speaking of AOC in the House, it came out this weekend amazingly. AOC spent thousands of security, including $4,000 plus to ex-Blackwater contractor. Private security, private security. Uh, for a person that is all decriminalized the police, well, that makes sense, right? Because she doesn't want state protection. She wants private protection, I guess. The Blackwater firm is well known as a private hush-hush, who knows what we do entity. And out the other side of her mouth, she's saying defund the police means defunding police. Yes, you defund the police. The only thing left is for the local areas that can afford it, the neighborhoods that can afford it. People begin to hire local, private, corporate protections. And those people are held a lot less accountable than you even think police are not really held accountable now. It's dangerous. It's a slippery slope. They're not ones hiring social workers. Says right here, Blackwater isn't hiring social workers. I mean, the police aren't either, but they have the state government entity to do so. You wonder, you know, do these people see their own hypocrisy? Uh, to spend $34,000 on private security, period, 4K, yes, to Blackwater. Since 2021 started, to be clear, massive. Ironic, Hippocratic, but private military and security is not the only place these shady black named Blackwater, Blackrock entities are working their way into the government. Uh, this weekend, stories began to came out about Blackrock, the world's largest asset manager. They own, you know, $9 trillion in holdings. It's increasingly working its way into Washington, D.C. It is facts now that a global head of sustainable investing, Brian Deese, is the director of Ec National Economic Council for the Biden administration, the former chief of staff for the CEO of BlackRock, the deputy secretary of the Treasury. The global chief investment strategist is the chief economic advisor to the VP. They're in there. They're not just lobbying. They're not working through other people they have government roles and seats to directly draft create suggest policy it's not a name like goldman sachs it's not household uh, but they are more powerful they are buying up houses all across the u.s at 150 percent value just to corner the market they are they're investing in just about every big tech company. I, this is a thing that needs to be talked about. It doesn't seem to get much attention. Uh, it made, you know, news this weekend. It made Twitter. It made New York Post. It, it made Business Insider here. But is it talked about? Is it widely known? I mean, they're a Vanguard. They're a $500 billion, trillion dollar. I mean, control money they can basically print their own and print their own bills while they're at it i i just wanted to touch on it while we're on dc more what the fuck the third police officer from the january 6th capital incident dies by suicide that's what the headline says there's not enough investigation here you know gunther hashida he was found dead in his home thursday he was one of the second people to respond to the Capitol uh, incident. You, There's no indication as to why he would have committed suicide. I mean, even if he felt horrible about his complicity, 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 complicity in allowing it to happen, if he, if he is getting, you know, unalived to cover things up, if he, you could go several different ways with this. Days, days after another D.C. police officer, Jeffrey Smith, took his own life. They're going down. They're, they're, they're popping out. They're, I don't know. 
I, I could speculate and stipulate lots of different things about it. I mean, to me, videos of, you know, crowd suppression techniques being thrown to the back of that capital crowd, it's basically pushing them forward. I mean, they incited that. Now, of course, in the same breath, we've got to be honest, the people, they'll, the people that were there fell for it, right? I mean, unfortunate, horrible, but they got tricked into actually committing something that people could actually be prosecuted for. Unjust, unmoral, wrong to see, wrong to do. Who knows what comes out of it? Because people are already being sentenced to jail from January 6th. I mean, hopefully some real sway, change in public opinion and judicial opinion happens before too many people end up going. And hopefully those people that have get released. It, this is, you know, Occupy Congress the other day, anything that happened summer of 2020. This is a different reaction. It's clear that because they tricked them, this is the reaction they wanted to have for this. I just, I just think it's, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. The sit and wait, trust the plan isn't right either. But we as a nation, as a country, as a mass public, we've got to be smarter. Got to be smarter. Now, in Canada, just north of the U.S., the Prime Minister announced his appointment of five new senators. Right? You heard that? Appointment of five new senators. The Canadian Senate is interesting. It, it, it works basically. The Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, it, he's elected, but no one else in the Senate really is. They are, they are recommended and then appointed. The Governor General is the person that appoints them. They are recommended by the Prime Minister. Literally, none of these people elected. And they're... Their views held, listed, they can say they're independent, they can say they're Whigs, conservatives. I mean, it's not a merit-based pro process, right? It says here, you know, chosen using merit-based process open to all Canadians. Right. Sure. But just like anything, it, that's not really merit-based. That's who do you know based? What can you do based? And these people's views, as, as independent as they claim, as nonpartisan, there's independent, there's nonpartisan, there's 85% of them vote with what the prime minister, the person recommending them, wants, buys for his own policy, whether it's his suggested bill, whatever. They generally vote complicitly. Now, bouncing over to Russia here, it, a former Obama advisor to Moscow, ambassador to Moscow, Michael McFaul, fell into a bit of a trap of his own over the weekend. He got trolled or whatever, but he lashed out. I mean, Glenn Greenwald here with the report, and he says, I have a job for my life at the best university in the world. I live in a giant house in paradise. I make close to a million dollars a year. I have adoring fans on TV and half a million followers on Twitter, 99% of who admire, admire me. I'm doing just fine without a damn visa from Russia, and I'm not unafraid to tweet under my own name. I feel sorry for people like you who aren't brave enough to do so. Yikes. I mean, he got trolled, right? He got, he, he got it brought out of him. He said things about non-excuse. I wrote this in a private message. I couldn't have expected it to be published. Everything on the internet's published. You are, you publish it. You press send. He has a book come out recently. I mean, the dude is the definition of not nepotism because it's not like his father did it for him, but political networking. He he buyed his way into political power to turn it into financial success. I don't know who's buying this guy's book. But like he says, it's making him money. I don't know what people are adoring him, but 
99% of them are bots. Oh, wait, 99% adore him. You know, they're all bots. It Funny. I mean, it's nice to see them fall for traps, you know, and not be able to wipe it from the web. I like that. It's funny. Not a man I'm a fan of anyway, so... Now... We talked about, you know, immigration, people in the southern border. But that's not the only people that are coming to the country, right? We have refugee statuses. The U.S. expands here from Al Jazeera. It's refugee program amid escalating violence. Yes, it's getting dangerous there. We aren't there anymore. We have private contractors there, sure. But it's getting dangerous for the actual civilians. Uh, they are pushing, the State Department says, eligibility of refugee admission beyond its 20,000 applicants that they normally do. People are flooding this country again. Flooding. I don't know necessarily the game plan here. I mean, I could certainly speculate a couple things, and they, they do have to do with, with a plandemic, a continuedemic. I like that word. Fear. I mean, it, it riles up the right. It gets ignored by the left. It I've said it before, right wing, left wing, the whole bird needs to die. It's just my opinion. We've got to do something else. Not a meritocracy, not Canada, but something else. You know, people flooding into the U.S. Well, today China closes its borders. Uh, COVID outbreak in Beijing has, has forced them to close their borders again, they say. Strange. It's a big sign. It says something. I wonder. I mean, unclear, it says here, how many in China are fully vaccinated. Authorities from China, trust them or not, say 1.6 billion doses have been administered. If you even do the two shots, I mean, that's, that's a lot. There's 1.2, I think, billion people in China. So two shots, that means, you know, over half. I don't know. I mean, Lindsey Graham just announced that he had COVID and we know he's double vaccinated. It seems like. I mean, they did lockdowns because the spread was asymptomatic, right? So if everything's asymptomatic after the vaccines. What changed? I mean, correct me where I'm wrong. Yes, it doesn't make the infection as bad. Yes, it, yes, it lowers hospitalization. I'm just wondering if it, like, if if it's not inoculating people from coronavirus, why is it called a vaccine? Because that's the easy term for people to know. No, I call it a therapeutic. Then I don't know. Here, the U.S. and the U.K. join Israel in blaming Iran for the oil tanker attack. Tehran denies involvement, of course, but it's interesting. U.S. and U.K. have outspokenly said that they blame Iran and that they consider retaliation. Uh, this considering things, I mean, I wish someone would just do something for real, but I mean, words are words. Israel itself says that it has it has it has the goods, it has the facts, it has the receipts. So we haven't seen those come out yet. We will see if they do. But interestingly, while the UK, US, Israel talking about you know reciprocation, tomorrow, Wednesday, the new president of Iran is sworn in. That's a ceremony, right? I mean, you've got old leaders there. You've got you know, aristocracy there, oligarchy, whatever you want to call them. The former judiciary chief of Iran won the 18, June 18th presidential election. election. He got 62% of the votes. So he's a, he's a mildly at least popular guy. It would seem the leader of the Islamic revolution, Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei, 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 excuse me, sorry. He'll be there too. I mean, this is a 
not a who's who, but a political who's who in Iran. And uh, not to give anyone a battle tactic, but good a place as any to do something, you know. But, you know, we'll wake up and see tomorrow. So, all in all, I mean, a crazy, crazy, crazy last 24, 48 hours. A lot of interesting things coming out. I I wonder where it all leads. Doesn't seem like it's leading to a good place. But it is, you know, it's not boiled over yet, but... I mean, it's at least boiling. It's not even bubbling anymore. It's boiling. Hasn't boiled over. I don't know what specific event makes it reach fever pitch. I mean, like I said, impeach Biden trended today. It, man, wheels are turning. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I tried not to report on COVID too much, of course. I mean, it works its way in there. It's an all-encompassing, ridiculous thing. Uh, only one or two articles there. Talked about, you know, shoddies a time or two, but I really appreciate you sticking with me, guys. Uh, a public episode that I think is going to be a good one on its way shortly. And I hope you have a good rest of your week. I'll see you all tomorrow.